on just three occasions. They've met just twice in the last four years, but last month's crushing defeat at the World Grand Prix must be fresh in Ding's mind. Watching on to see whether he can avenge that loss, Alan McManus is alongside Phil Yates in the commentary box. But first, to introduce the players, our MC, John McDonald. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. A very warm welcome to the venue, Cymru, in Clandidno. Welcome to our first quarter-final of the Labrooks Players' Championship. Brought to you by the World Snooker, live on ITV Sport. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our referee, Robert Zlablowski, is ready to go. Let's meet the players. Firstly, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome China's number one. The winner of 13 ranking events, the sensational Ding Chang Hui! And now, ladies and gentlemen, here he is. The five-time champion of the world, the Rocket Ronnie He gave the referee a low five. He wants to be the first to six. That's Ronnie O'Sullivan up against Ding Xunhui, a player Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. he holds first in first very break. high regard. Ding Xunhui to break. So much, Alan McManus suggests that Ronnie O'Sullivan will win tonight. But those who ignore Ding's claims do so at their peril. Yeah, you would never discount Ding tonight. I think Ronnie's a warm favourite, isn't he? But yeah, I think Ding Jin Hui, that at times in the last season or two, can be a bit blasé about certain events, but won't be that tonight. Well, a shot to nothing, essentially. The only problem was he got so close to the red, it stayed in the vicinity of the pocket. Yeah, looking at the, on the path of the cue ball here, Ding, I think priority number one, just pot it. Only playing this with pace. Went into those reds. Try and spring the cue ball somewhere. I say, make sure the pot above all. Yeah, again, there you go. Not that difficult a shot, in all honesty. It's a tough one for Ronnie, similar, but. Again, make sure the pot. <laughs> yeah, the difference was he, he, can, he didn't play it with pace. He was liable to stick on them. Black ball. One. That seemed to be quite a, a springy Browns to me, hence he's left the red. One. Yeah, it was perhaps more square than springy, I wonder, but uh, yeah, good early chance now for Dink, hand on the table, you know, feel for conditions out there. Six.
Seven. Yeah, now he's going to play for two reds. Red in the left corner, obviously. He'd love to land in the one below the cluster. In fact, he's not playing, he's just playing for the one below the cluster. Perfect. Twelve. I thought in previewing the match, Neil Folds made a really salient point when he said that only 11 months ago, Ding beat O'Sullivan in the quarterfinals of the World Championship. Not only that, he's also beaten him in a ranking event final in the past. Northern Ireland Trophy in 20. 2006. So he knows what it takes, even though the head-to-head -head would suggest a rather one-sided progression of results. Twenty-one. Twenty-eight. Before this, they played a hundred and sixty frames between them. Dingus won 58, so basically one in every three. Needs to improve on that tonight, obviously. 36. Yeah, so the red obviously goes now. You would think he'll be topping this through. Screwing back be busy getting on well be busy getting top side of the blue so you're just thinking about which way to play this I think playing with top yeah he is doing watch your cue ball 37 yeah not ideal was it good contact off the cluster never going to be certain who was going to finish then the red on the outside will go to yellow pocket that may be what he's playing for. Ding Junhui, 37. Well, no damage done apart from the loss of seven points. I suppose when you're in a situation like that, Alan, easy to be demotivated because you know it's basically end of break anyway. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if he was playing for one. If he was playing for one, then... He had it way too hard, so perhaps there wasn't anything on. Ronnie looks like he's eyeing up a possible plant. Maybe play it as a shot to nothing, holding for black. One. Yeah, just much too hard. Forced its way through the, the meat of the bunch there. So two red spotted from O'Sullivan so far. The first time he couldn't see a colour at all. This time he can only see the pink, and it's of no use whatsoever to him. Green ball. Not a good sign, Alan. He's had two reds from distance, and he's caught both of them grossly thick. Yeah, you'd, you would normally expect Ding to knock that in. Take the shot. He's going to have to. Going to have to nail those tonight if he's going to beat O'Sullivan. So another chance. 
cannot keep passing up these chances, Ding. Almost playing this shot, you're almost playing for the blue to left middle. Watch the cue ball. I think mentally, a lot of players would do that just to help the shot take the pressure Three. off it. A decent position now, just one good position, real good positional shot away from making it a chance to win this opening frame, and that'll do nicely. Good shot, Four. that. All right, you may have to play the cannon, but. I think he's bound to land in a red. Nine. Yeah, you see it. Yeah, I think that will pass. In and around 16. the high value colours when they're all open, there's no one more reliable. He's the epitome of this kind of precision. Although Sullivan needed snookers before the disappearance of the pink. Frame's over. 24. But just wants to win it as cleanly as possible. Yeah, you've got to love Ding's technique in and around the, the pink and black spot. Little stuns and screws. I always think with Ding, even though he's very compact in the shot, 31. he gives the cue ball plenty of room. Getting that balance isn't easy. 32. Thirty nine. You just notice 40. as he clears the, these colours up here, he doesn't over hit shot stings in weight. They kind of, it's like a mini punch, it's not like a solid punch. Yeah, a different style to O'Sullivan. We'll see, we, well, we see a lot of them, don't we? But you know, when he's in, he punches these balls in, you hear the leather, the crack of the leather. But Dingy kind of more floats them in, just kind of flicks them in. Different styles. But gorgeous to watch when he's in full flight, this boy. Well, of course, Asia is the world's most heavily populated continent, and he is the greatest snooker player ever from Asia, which is a, a real feather in the cap. Anyway, <laughs> Miss Brown, but it mattered not. Breaks of 37 and 50. Ding makes a desirable start. He leads Ronnie O'Sullivan by a frame to zero. House this evening, and there is the reason. Rocket Ronnie O'Sullivan looking to draw level with Ding Junwei. Nothing doing really for O'Sullivan in the first frame. He potted a couple of reds. Dropped on absolutely nothing.
this, you know, could be a, a big barrier for O'Sullivan because this season he's won four ranking tournaments, the Shanghai Masters, the English Open, UK Championship, and more recently World Grand Prix. And every time he's got past the quarterfinals, he's lifted the trophy. So if he makes the semi-finals, basically, he's in the groove. Beautiful safety shot and ding. Forcing Ronnie to come up with something here. I don't think he'll be playing the thin one. I think this is half ball in the red. Has to avoid the red in the left cushion. Best way of doing that is thick half ball. There's the half ball. And he just managed to slip past the blue. There might be a red on for Dink. Right near us, the left corner. I don't know if we can swing the cue ball around the back of the bunch. Oh, ding. That is a bad mistake. Have you been fortunate? You have. Yeah, hand up and apology. Cannot afford... Little mistakes like that tonight. All right, he's gotten away with that one. And if Ronnie, I'm up behind the green on the bulk cushion here, I'll have advantage because the red on the left side of the cushion is no good to ding with it touching the cushion. Advantage of Sullivan. His safety last night against Dot was beyond description almost. It was not only accurate, but so well conceived. It was as though he was taking great pleasure in it as well. Yeah, it was a treat to watch, wasn't it? Then playing the containing safety. That'll do. Should be all right. Let's just keep our eye on Ronnie's sort of demeanour in this type of situation tonight. Be taking his time, picking the right spot to put Ding in trouble. Yeah, send the red up, side and bolt cushion. Oh. Deciding, <laughs> Deciding to try and lay another trap. He's not quite played it as desired. <laughs> Look at the left side of the bunch there. He's trying to tempt Ding in to play this, playing this thin, banking on that he gets it thick and catches the other red. Let's see if the plan comes together. <laughs> Ding's wise to it. Good shot. Always thinking, where do I leave the, the guy that's sitting in the chair? What does he want to play and what does he not want to play? Yeah, clever again. You see that red again on the left side cushion. It's of absolutely no use to ding. He's playing this, he's playing a possible speculative plant here, but at least he can't cannon that red, so should get the return to bulk. And he gets the plant, bonus time. How's the kiss? Well, One. not great. <laughs> not great positionally, but tickle in behind the green would do nicely. I say it. Thank you. Definitely tried the plant there, so a good shot, Ding Jun Hui. Now, if the Reds are all tightly packed together, this wouldn't be too much of a headache for O'Sullivan, but there are plenty of them scattered all around. 
Yeah, red near the right pocket. He's playing on. Doesn't want a square bounce off the third cushion. Foul. Yeah, he'll get another nice. go at it. Ling Junhui five. Colin, is the threat okay? The referee, Robert Sablotsky, asking Colin Humphreys, who's his marker, to look at the the video capture of where the balls were originally. There's Colin going through the procedure. They work as a team, marker and referee. Of course, in non-televised snooker, there is no marker, so the referee has to be Mr. Memory Man. Yeah, the, the, the red that he's trying to get correct, there's no, no real relevance to the shot or the situation, so... As long as it's roughly where it was, that looks all right. So again, let's just look at this now. If he plays the same shot, the, the bounce off the third cushion is going to be vital. The cushions have been misbehaving just a fraction this afternoon session, so let's watch this. Once it, the third cushion to slide south on him. Well, he's not got the pace to reach, I don't think. Foul and miss, Ling Junhui four. You see, you could tell there, six feet out he wasn't going to reach. <laughs> it just didn't look right, did it? Amazing. At least about two or three mil short. Now he's got the line, though. I would confidently say he's going to pull the shot off pretty well. Unless, of course, there's a, an irregular reaction off the cushion. Right here. Zablotsky just happy there that only the cue ball moved. Foul and miss, Ling Jun Kui four. Almost a time Foul warp. <laughs> Exact same result as the previous. Well, Dean got out of his chair and walked down this side of the table. It was pretty clear that the cue ball was going to go back. He just wants to be fully concentrated here, has to get that gap between blue and black. Yeah, this is better. Good shot. And given the trouble he was in, three misses and 12 penalty points, a more than acceptable trade-off for O'Sullivan. Medicine time for Dink. Can't do anything with it. So just forced into there, almost inviting Ronnie to play a good safety shot. <laughs> yeah. Both reds on the side cushions at the other side of the table are quite important here. Just slip past the top edge of the green playing this. And he should have ding in trouble. He got past the top edge, just. Good shot. Once again, well, the red nearest the blue he can play. Not really playing the pot, though. The pot looks a natural in off. So, yeah, played it thin.
Now that one by his standards was loose. The red that's been left is by no means easy. But it wasn't his best, was it, O'Sullivan? It's probably a bit unlucky, and Ding can't take it on anyway. There's no future in potting it, so this is a tough one. No, a great shot. Very good. The cue ball, where it actually finished, wasn't all that important. That shot by Ding, it was just a case of get it safe. It's very un Ronnie like when you take last night's performance oh. into consideration. It's like you could almost describe that as clumsy. Knocking that red over the corner. No big chance. Three or four colours to play on here. It's a poor shot. That is not good. What? Well, does the pink go? No. It does. I mean, he's fortunate because I don't think he played for it. I'd absolutely love the pink spot to be covered here when he pots this. And at this level, that kind of positional good luck, and as Alan said, that's what it was, can make such an immense difference. It seems subtle. Seven. Many people in the audience might think, well, he played for the pink, but clearly he didn't, because he would need to be so accurate, it would be almost impossible to predict he would do so. Caught that eight on the thick side, but I think he's just about got the angle on the black. And alternative colours as well. You see these outrageous flukes and extraordinary fluke snookers, which okay. obviously turn matches at times, but it's that kind of positional twist that can be so, 16. so important. That's a fabulous shot, didn't look anything. And now he's in business. Got the 22. Oh, I know it's the pink on the black spot. He's got it exactly where he wants it now. 23. 40 to 41 the lead. He doesn't really want to play into the three reds off this. He may have to. But as I say, he didn't want to disturb those. He didn't want to free the pink spot just yet. Looks like he's forced into playing it. Bundles of side and just about enough travel on the cue ball to be ideal on the black. Two nil, looming. Yeah, I was mentioned about styles and thing around the pink spot, and pink and black spot again. It's these little shots, like how soft he hits this. Oh, he's, that is awful. For Ding Junhui, I mean, that is the worst shot he's played 
probably this season. Just about to sing his praises about his cue ball control, and that was, by any standards, that was, well, poor. And we've seen time and time again this kind of pink can go astray so, so easily. Never threatened, always overcut, and so Sullivan has a lifeline. We saw yesterday against Graham Dot. Might well have lost the first frame. Dot missed a black. O'Sullivan cleared up with 48 and never looked back. One. This clearance, the opposite of straightforward, but he's produced so many extraordinary escapes in the past, you never write him off. Seven. Eight. No. Probably it's time to try and promote something. That's the two in the side cushion. Fabulous shot, absolutely out of this world that shot is. To get both moving and the cue ball back out into play as well was awesome. He knows the Ding will be sitting in his chair, mulling over that really ham-fisted positional shot. And he knows that if he can take advantage and make him sit there for a while, it might have a long-term effect on the match. Yeah, and this next red is guaranteed a perfect angle in the black to push the other two into play. Worrying times here for Ding. This next shot is massive. Now, which 22. way will he play it? I would rather play into the red and just get cushion first and then push the red up the way. That's the way he's played it. No, not quite as planned. I think he was thinking the same thing, probably just overhit it. 29. Thirty. Oh, what a shot again. <laughs> All right, it was a big target, but... 36. Still a fantastic shot. And now seven. will his left-handedness come into play in a couple of shots' time? What a break this has been so far. What 44. a break. Forty-five. You can't get... He can't get really close to the red, it looks like, with the angle. He's probably going to finish about maybe 18 inches away from it. That's where he's looking. Does he fancy it from there? I think if he can get within about 8 or 10 inches of it, he'd really fancy the red. That's why he's playing the pink. He can get in deeper and get closer to the red. Where the rest of the balls are, you get the feeling it's all about this. And the fact that the red's tight on the cushion, is that a help? Yeah, well, on a club table it would be because there's a groove down the rail, but no, this is a toughie. You have to relax your arm through this as best you can. You know, it wasn't easy. Not easy. Going on Sullivan, 51. And right now, Ding's got only one emotion, relief. Tremendous break from O'Sullivan, but I think now you have to say, 
Ding really should take a 2 0 lead as he should have done 10 minutes ago. Yeah, he couldn't certainly couldn't criticise that from O'Sullivan. The only bad thing about it was he actually hit the pink too well. Got into it too much now, Ding. Well, under normal circumstances, this is a formality. Six behind black 13, so Brown required. Can't snooker himself in the blue. So, should be a formality. He said he can't snooker himself in the blue. It, he almost did, but it would have been, he'd have been busy doing that anyway. So, Brown required. Ten. Thirteen. Seventeen. Twenty-two. We've seen a segment of O'Sullivan brilliance in this frame. But we've also seen 28. Ding double his advantage. <laughs> it was all about the last red. O'Sullivan missed it. Ding did the rest. And the rocket still to leave the launch pad. He trails Ding Junwei. 2-0. Thank you, third frame. Ding Junhui to break. Thank the you. second frame here tonight was twice as lengthy as the first, and it was twice as good. A really good conclusion. O'Sullivan had the, the chance to clear. It would have been a miraculous clearance, but he came close. The last red, though, cost him, and that's why Ding's made the agreeable start for 2-0, but that break was entirely hashed a shocker one well, yeah that was a shocker catch that last red as thick as that and bring it back up the table just the cue ball up the collector's item I imagine they've done that all season long I think there's someone moving behind the pocket. There he is, keeps bobbing in and out. I think it's actually one of our security men who's just coming over to speak to the referee to get it sorted out. No, 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 no. Hey, hey. Oh, he's speaking to the wrong person. This guy, security guy. <laughs> There's nothing worse than movement behind a pocket. So off-putting. Oh dear. Oh dear. On your Sullivan one. Yeah. Probably just lost concentration for seconds there. Funny thing with that is when something distracts One. you, get, you get down eventually to play the shot and you say, right, OK, I'm, I'm not going to be distracted by that thing that happened, but that's <laughs> you are distracted by thinking about it. Strange. Smashing shot from Ding. Powerfully Ace. off the top cushion into the Reds. That have split beautifully. That little incident there Fine. was reminiscent of the golf tour. You speak to so many pros who say one of the most off-putting things is when they're standing on the tee and the stewards hold those quiet please signs up. They create a shadow and get in the eye line and the players hate that. 
Yeah, everything was fine till you raised your arm, mister. Sixteen. Might not be the worst idea for Dink to play on the pink with a shred. Yeah, settling on the black. Seventeen. But this is a big, big visit. You feel that already in this match, it's a you know, long, long way to go, best of 11. <coughs> yeah, pink this time. 24. Let's get the pink up onto the blue spot, out of harm's way. Let's make things a wee bit more tidy down this end. 25. One. Something I've always admired about Ding Jin Hui, the way he plays the game. You could argue that in some ways it's not a modern style of game because it, it's not power based, it's just all touch and technique. And not many players 32. like him in the game, but he backs himself to overcome all obstacles the way he does it. Again, purely based on touch and technique like that that he's just displayed. He's played that to the inch. Brilliant shot. 39. And when Ding's oh. game is healthy, so is Snooker, because we now have such a big imprint in the People's Republic of China overwhelmingly because of him prime time here this match of course but in china it's middle of the night 40. oh and ding's gone to sleep there things are quite 40. Yeah, i'm gonna have to stop singing his praises how has he missed that One. He got away with it, but only just in the last frame. Eight. This is where O'Sullivan is a different animal these days to what he was 10, 15 years ago. 2 0 down, 40 behind to class act like Ding. Work to do, reds and cushions. Blue not easy. I don't see anybody would have thrown the towel in, but look at the application he's got now. What's the right shot? Which way? What's the best way to go about this? Taking his time, concentrating. Good to see. Fifteen. How clever 15. a shot that was. He played for the pink, known he's on brown and yellow anyway. And he's played it to the millimetre. I think being on the spot gives him access to the top red and the left side cushion in a couple of shots <laughs> time. 22.
23. And he may use it here. 29. Back for pink, or is it a high black? No, that was not the... No, I, I don't think that was the correct time First. to try and lift a red. This will be dead weight in or over. It feels he can get the cannon, but it just didn't look on, did it? Anyway, back in the frame. 36. Well, we've talked about discipline, attitude, application. That was pushing the boat out. And to get away with it, he's been fortunate. I would say, up to this point, I think Ding's had the better run of the two. But there, the pendulum swung. Well, four. normally, a direct in-off, you can pick them out. That one, though, a little harsh to say that. Yeah, this is not an easy shot. I wouldn't be massively surprised if he put Ding back into bat here. Which way do you play this? Yeah, that was not easy, and he's given Ding a shot at it. I would have probably, I think he should have put Ding back in there. And it's gone now, mind you. But big shots, big moments coming up here. Well, frankly, nowhere near. It's not a straight pot, so he can play the red up and down if he wishes. He won't be getting the double kiss. Cue ball will win that race at the crossover point. There you see it. Oh, yeah, oh, well. <laughs> My mistake. He's got the double kiss, and that could prove very costly. I think if he'd played it softer, he probably would have avoided the double kiss, but... And a clever shot by Ronnie, played for green. One. And just the blue will be required. Yes, it could be a ticklish pot, so not having to play position on the pink Five. is a real bonus. As would Seven. winning this frame, because 3-0 was on the cards a couple of times. Ten. Fourteen. Thank Sensible, you. no positional ambition, because by potting the blue, he's left Ding requiring a couple of snookers. That's just what Ronnie O'Sullivan needed. Ding missed the pink to middle. He missed the last red when he had a chance. And he played a, a poor safety shot as well. That means O'Sullivan's back in the match. Thank you. Fourth frame, Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. 
We could be about to see a, a crucial frame here. I think if O'Sullivan can get to the interval at 2-2, he would have the, the moral victory because 3-0 there was writ large at one point. Something else he wasn't doing in his opening round was breaking off left-handed. He's back to that. Oh, there's no reason behind it. Little plant to right middle ding didn't have a good look at it. Which is ill advised. Yeah, I nailed it. You have to pay attention every second you're out there against Ronnie. Nine. Rarely misses a pot like this. So reliable with that kind of shot, especially those recovery blues into the, the ball pockets when he's out of position. Fourteen. Fifteen. Yeah, just low of straight in this next tread would be ideal. Yeah, I didn't quite get into it straight. So change of plan. 22. 23. That red nearest the black's going to help him with the deep screw here because the cue ball's going to almost chase it back, back towards where Ronnie is. See that? He's trying to push them open. He's got one to left corner, sorry, left middle. Not easy, Good. mind it. No cue ball just nestling against that red and chasing it back. Yeah, appears he's not even on the red. Not nothing, in fact. That's unfortunate. Played a couple of good shots. Pots this in the green pocket, we can all go home. Now get out of here. How's he potted that? 31. And the position wasn't too shabby either. <laughs> oh, has he found this one? 38. Monstrous, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, the ITV viewers know I love a hot shot. If that's not there at the end of this week, I will be going home. <laughs> what a dig that was. 46. Uh, looking back to that, Dings had one shot in this frame, the, the dump safety, but he didn't pay attention. Left the plant to right Seven. middle, and he sat in his chair. Well, Frame's not as far from done yet, but he's sat in his chair ever since. Fifty-four. From a position of what was looking like a three-nil lead within about five or ten minutes. It looks like it's going to 55. be two all at the mid-session interval. Anyone who's played snooker at any level will know that when cue ball and object ball are Six. close together, as they were there, and you're cutting back into a blind pocket, it's so difficult to judge the potting angle. Over a short distance, 61. let alone length of the table, 
worth another look. This was gold. Sixty eight. Sixty nine. So the break time just over four minutes. Frame wrapped up. The next goal for O'Sullivan to make a century. Seventy six. Seventy seven. He's actually made 21 centuries over the years against Ding alone. That's in professional competition. 84. 85. Uh, the referee's got to be careful out there when he touches the cue ball. It's on fire. This has been sparkling. 92. 93. We can also like setting a new target for the high break prize. Nine three nine. Now the career centuries, sixty five this season. One hundred and six. One hundred and seven. You know, O'Sullivan's total career prize money in terms of simply high break prizes is higher than some players on the circuit. A lot of players, in fact. He's made a fortune doing this. 114. 116. 119. Well, if he goes on and makes the clearance, this will be 141 from the Dream Factory. This has been that good. Unbelievable opening red. Never mind the red into the green pocket. What a break this has been. Nonchalant and classy. 134. That's loose. Come on, Ronnie. One last slice of genius. 24. No total clearance, oh, but Sullivan. one of the best breaks you're ever likely to see held together by one of the best pots you're ever likely to see. And also that crunching double. Ronnie O'Sullivan and Ding Wei, 2-2. What an exhibition from Ronnie O'Sullivan. And gentlemen, please welcome back our quarter finalist. Ding Zhang Wei and Ronnie O'Sullivan. The match resumes at two all. Thank you. Ronnie O'Sullivan having trailed Five. two nil. Ding Zhang Wei to break. And one of the things that Ding has got to guard against is the feeling that he might have missed the boat. He certainly should have led 3-0. Mr. Basic pink to middle. O'Sullivan won that frame. And then added a sublime 134 break in the fourth frame. One. Nice opening red from O'Sullivan. Yep, an intriguing first four frames. Plenty to plenty to look at. Like you say, Clive, definitely Ding possibly missed the boat there with that pink. 
Ronnie looks like he's uh, back focus now. And but saying that, oh. one thing you don't need from Ronnie is him getting flukes. He doesn't need them. Very positive shot choice. The oh. green was. Could have rolled up behind it, but the pack was mostly Five. tied up tight. So he thought that the green was a good option. And it showed his confidence in taking it on. Yeah, he's just come a little bit straight here. I think the left of the two reds goes into left middle. Could be an option. Or he can just push it out a little bit and leave the other red into the corner. Yeah, gone that way. But definitely looking for an angle now. No more loose ones after this one. 12. Thirteen. So choice. Just a little cannon into that red there, or just leave it to left centre. Yeah, the latter. This one frees up the other one, which will be perfect. Just to Twenty. pot and open up a few reds. So all of a sudden, this is looking good. Twenty-one. Just like shelling peas, only more skillful. Operating it. Operating at uh, 17 seconds per shot. 28. But it's not how long, it's 29. how many. That could have finished much nicer. Yeah, that one's gone slightly wrong, but I think on his iron this blew up, so obviously in positive mood now. Struck absolutely beautifully. <laughs> yeah, looks like he's, he's back where he was the other night now. 34. Had to strike downwards slightly and pulled it wide. Still a bit surprising that he missed it. Yeah, not not easy then, but like you say, always a surprise when Ronnie misses one in and around the black spot area. No harm done though. Just feel it's very important for Ding just to sort of get a bit of focus back in this match. He needs to just get in and make a nice little 50 or 60 break just to get rid of them bad memories. That's a pretty ropey safety from O'Sullivan. Doesn't usually make mistakes like that. No, his safety's not been quite so sharp tonight. It was absolutely immaculate last night against Graham Dot. He's made a few sort of unforced mistakes in the safety department so far. You just feel Ding needs to sort of get his, get his rhythm One. back. He just sort of lost his way a little bit in that third frame. I'm sure Ding had his coach, Terry Griffiths, saying all the right things to him during the mid-session interval. Would have been telling him not to worry that he lost a 2-0 lead. It was still only 2-all. Six. All to play for still. <laughs>
Not the ready played for here, Ding, but we'll take it. Nicely played, nice shot. Seven. So once again, choices. Roll through for the loose red into opposite corner. Or he can actually screw up into these. They look like a nice nice punch just to screw into it. Be surprised he didn't land on one. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Pot this red. Depending on where 14. the pink goes, he could play for the pink in the middle here, and that loose leaves that red open. He'd like the pink to go up onto the uh, the yellow spot here when potting it. Fifteen. It turns out that there was room for the pink on its own spot. 22. Yeah, but it's not it's not all bad news, Clive, is it where it's gone now? That's a nice that's a nice bunch to go into now. Nice target. Pink and red. That looks like bad news though. 27. Yeah, I think things are a bit bemused there. I think he fully expected to land on at least one red. Didn't see how he could have played that much different. Maybe a bit more pace, but it's just one of them. It's a little bit unfortunate. King Jung Kui, 27. Yes, good safety shot from Ding, but could be one of them situations where he's forced Ronnie into taking this on. We know Ronnie don't like playing dump shots. Well, he played one there. Had he attempted the pot, it would have been very dangerous, very risky. Yeah, sometimes not a lot you can do, really. It's normally a last resort for Ronnie. He doesn't like playing negative shots, whether they be in amongst the balls or in the safety department. But he somehow managed to force an open in. A loose one from Ding. Thin One. potting angle, so couldn't be entirely sure where the cue ball was going, but I've still been quite happy with the outcome. Yeah, good example there. Ronnie's cue action and cue power. Five. Didn't hit that white very hard at all and just got the absolute maximum spin. Makes it look very easy. And now you'd be very Six. surprised not to see him take a 3-2 lead. Nothing to do, no cannons, just simple positional shots. Thirteen. Yeah, it's a bit worrying for Ding now. Ronnie looks in full flow. I mean, normally know how that ends up. 19. Twenty. Yes, it looked as if Ding was going to take a 3 0 lead, but. Looks for all the world as if he's going to go behind 3 2 now. Twenty-five. 
26. Thirty-one. You all seem to just die a little bit off the cushion there. Just took Ronnie by surprise, but he's already done enough to leave Ding leading the snooker in this frame. And the last red 32. gives O'Sullivan all the extra insurance he's ever likely to need. Sullivan 32 and the frame. Ting remains seated and Sullivan leads by three frames to two. Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. Ronnie O'Sullivan started the week on £668,000 and odd in prize money. The record is £932,000 for a season. That was set by Mark Selby last season. So with this tournament, the China Open and the World Championship to go, O'Sullivan could be the first player to register a million pounds in prize money in a single season. That's a side issue though. He's simply concentrating on winning this match. Yeah, another, probably call it a careless safety shot from Ding there, hitting the green. Ronnie eyeing this one up. Red to left corner. Side cushion nicely on the black if it goes in. That one by a little way, by his standards. You almost expect him to pop them all, don't you, Joe? Well, you do, Clive, don't you? He just, it's very rare he misses anything. Things just not, just lost it a little bit. You know, even that shot there, all right, it's, Ronnie's probably not going to pop one, but it's, it's nowhere near the, nowhere near the ball cushion. So Ronnie pretty much do what he wants with his shot. The problem there was that uh, the potting angle was also a natural cannon onto the black. So he couldn't really control position as he would have liked. <laughs> Still managed to pop the pink though, and I think he can get it to another potable red. Or is the blue preventing him? Seven. Yeah, but there you see the difference. That's the advantage of getting a good cue ball. Makes this shot a whole lot tougher for Ding. <laughs> Got to be careful here. A few obstacles potentially in the way for his route back to Bulk. He needs to catch this just right. Looking at the plant, but I don't think... Well, I don't think it's on. He's going to have to make this by quite a lot. And from where he is with the cue ball, it's... No, I don't like the look of this. Containing safety. Yeah, he done well there. There wasn't really a lot else he could do other than take a big gamble.
Nisi again. If this white wasn't so close to the cushion, Ronnie could probably attempt this red to yellow pocket and just stun the white where it is and leave nothing, but that shot's not really on with how close he is to the cushion. Attempted red to middle, but it was very difficult. Left an easier red One. for Ding. So this is a good time for Ding to reassert himself. He's been in danger of being outplayed. Needs a substantial contribution Five. here. Six. Yeah, just playing for a choice here. I'm not sure if the red above the black pots into this right corner. It looks like it definitely pots into the left corner. Oh, it does, yeah, you can see. So I think I'll be looking to sort of get that out of the way at some stage and black will go up onto the green spot. So in two or three shots time, this would look like a very inviting Twelve. chance for Ding. The red above the black goes into the left corner as well. This is this is more like it. Needs this. Seventeen. Needs just to get get his eye back in. Get settled again. Eighteen. Twenty-five. Yeah, always, always nice sometimes to have that red just the other side of the blue spot. He's come wrong side of the blue there, but it's not a problem because just play on the red at the other end of the table. When he comes back down to the business end, Thanks. you can see there's three loose reds there, and once he takes them, I think that frees another one, and it'll probably be enough to get him over the line this frame before he has to play any any kind of cannon. One. Just got a nice shot there of just exactly how things set up looks. It's absolutely dead straight. I don't think there's another player in the game that looks as straight as that on the shot. Makes them little shots so easy when you're that technically good. Forty three. Forty four. Well, as long as he can pop the black, that looks like the key shot in this frame. Yep, he hasn't got to worry about the black. I think it goes up on the green spot, but that's not going to be in the way. 51. So, yeah, providing any uh, severe mishaps. This is a good visit from Ding, exactly what he needed. 52. Having lost the last three frames.
58. This is what top quality match Luke was all about. You know, he sat Nine. up for a few frames there, but when the chance come along, in saying that, he's left himself a tricky one and he shouldn't have done. Yeah, no problem. Nice little cannon. 65. 66. Yeah, it's good stuff from Ding. Good, good mental toughness. This will, this will make him feel good. The fact that he's like looked a bit out of sorts the last few frames, but he's really took these well. 72. 73. Seventy-nine. Eighty. <clears throat> Eighty-six. Eighty-seven. Surprisingly, Ding has made only 17 92. centuries this season. Centuries don't mean everything, but it's one indicator 94. that his form hasn't been as consistent as it might have been. 97. This has been a well taken and timely century, though. 106. 112. Ding clears up with 119 and levels the match at three all. Game seven, Ding Xunhui to break. Level with five to play then. Tent stuff now, 3-3, three, three, big frame this one. Chance for Ding early on. Foul. Very unlucky. Sullivan, four. Yeah, it was unlucky. Didn't, didn't quite get into the cue ball as much as he wanted to. Just didn't quite zip it round behind the black. But still. Still very unlucky. He's left Ronnie a tempter at this one. Same sort of shot he had in the last frame, which he didn't get. Missed again. Exactly the same. Thick. The back heel. Again, another rare one from Ronnie. One of very, very rarely hits a ball colour. 
I don't think he hit one last night against Graham Dot. And this time, Jim found it one. easier to control the cue ball round behind the back of the black. Yeah, only one loose red out here, and the black's covered, so... Oh, I just caught the green, otherwise that was going to spread them far and wide. Definitely the right shot to play there. Six. Black was covered, pack was tight. He had just the right angle, though, to lay a tactical snooker. Not that it's going to advance his cause a lot, I don't think, with the pack so tightly bunched. Ball. That helps. There weren't many places Dink could have gone there, but for a touching ball, but we'll be looking to get him back somewhere where he's just played from. Still very tight, though. Yeah, I think slightly different shot this time for Ronnie. I think the green stuff in the two cushion. But very similar outcome. Four. Misjudgment by Ding. No immediate damage, I wouldn't have thought. Well, it looks like Ronnie's eyeing this one again. We've seen him miss two of these on the thick side so far. Absolutely middle of this one, though. <laughs> Doesn't miss the same shot three times. One. Oh, and look at that gap between the, between the red and pink if he has a look at the blue. But no, playing on loose one first. Yeah, I didn't think that O'Sullivan could quite reach the potting angle on the red, but... Four. Here he is, with a chance which he hopes to develop by opening the bunch sometime soon. Yeah, this looks very inviting, this, doesn't it? Screw into them reds. No, gone loose. Gone for the loose one first. Something Ronnie often likes to do. But it did look very inviting, didn't it, Clive? Particularly with the black tied up. Eleven. Not sure if that top red closest to the pink spot pots into left corner. If it does, it helps Ronnie's cause. Sixteen. Yeah, it does, and it's a great positional shot. Didn't have a lot of room there. Now you see him screw out of these reds again. Very nicely played. All of a sudden, they're loosening up. Seventeen. The chance is coming. I think you see a prime example there of the difference between the way Ronnie Brake builds and Judd Trump. There's no doubt whatsoever Judd would have just crashed into them reds off that blue and they would have gone everywhere. Twenty-one.
บันทิศสุดคิวบอลฟินิชิสบีฮายน์ในบอลคลายน์นู้ yeah it's just run far enough to leave a nice angle on the green but it all depends what pots into this right hand corner Obviously nothing. That's why he's tried to power the green in. That was a hell of a tough shot. Yeah, that, that was, was asking a bit too much. That one. Very good try by Ding, but he could pay for it. Yeah, that was close, wasn't it? One stage before that was going in, but when you get so close, they don't normally come away from the pocket. Not at that speed. One. Oh, that's just come far enough to make a nice, comfortable pot. To green pocket off the blue. Shot from running there, and just pop this red. May just Six. screw without playing any nudges, but you could also just flick off these reds if you wanted to. Seven. And he just grazed the pink there as he went through, which has meant he's wrong side of the pink. So he's really got to get into this, screw back across the table, just like that. Lovely shot. Thirteen. Yeah, just threaded the white through the gap there, and all of a sudden, frame beckons. Twenty. Twenty-one. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. That was frame ball in the it left in needing snookers. Not that he was ever going to get a chance to play for any. Thirty-four. Thirty-five. Forty-two. Ronnie keeping the ref on his toes there. Yes, I think that Harry Sullivan would prefer if it. Robert Zablocki was just a little bit quicker respotting the balls. But no matter. Forty-nine. Harry Sullivan has clinched the frame. Fifty-five. Foul. Ronald Sullivan, fifty-five. Ronald Sullivan, fifty-five. Day. Ronald Concludes the seventh frame. He regains the lead at four-three. O'Sullivan has won four of the last five frames after going two-nil down. And almost three nil.
throughout this match O'Sullivan has exuded confidence even when things haven't been going well which they certainly weren't in the in the first two or three frames yeah he seems to have a completely different demeanor tonight than we had last night he seems in a real bullish mood tonight he just wants to get the job done whereas last night he had the patience of a saint very different contrast overnight a nice shot there from Ding I think he's almost covered the reds but he might have just just left this one sticking out for Ronnie he can thread through the gap past the black yeah that was more that was more safety than part that shot Left doing a lot of choice here. Could easily be tempted into this long straight red, but it's not a nice shot. Beautiful shot. Struck. Perfectly. Great shot. One. Any slight misjudgment there, and that would have could have gone anywhere. Lovely shot from Ding. And he's pulled up just short enough for a ball colour, so Green ball. Exchanging blows at the moment, these two. of loose ones for things to go out here right at the bottom of the pack goes so but also they are situated quite nice the bunch for that that shot we see a lot now Ten. high on the blue straight into the pink as long as there's no plants to left or right corner 11 looks like he's going to play on the loose one Seventeen. Very interesting to see how certain players go about their break building. Obviously, Ronnie and Ding, very precise. Pick the loose ones off a little bit and then go into the pack at the right time. Other players just look to, just to get the reds open as fast as possible, no matter what's loose. But important now that he gets a good angle. There's no more loose reds after this one. It doesn't look a great pack to go into off the black. He'd much rather be high on the blue here. So he's going to take a good, good shot off the black to get these reds open. That's five. Uh, which part of the bunch does he go into? Well, I'll say it's not it's not a great bunch to go into. No, let's trust a bit to luck here. Yeah, he didn't he didn't leave himself enough angle on the black, and had to really power that one in. Twenty-five. Yeah, I think he missed a trick there. Hard to criticise Ding's break building, but they did look perfect to go into off the blue. A couple of shots previous. Didn't leave anything though, luckily for him. Better length this time from Ronnie. This red does cut in, but I think we're more concerned about the safety side of this shot.
much too thick. Surprised he went that way, to be honest. I thought he was going to play the other way. But no matter what way he went, he messed it up. So, chance for Ronnie. In good chance. There's two or three loose ones now. All going to this left corner by the looks of it. One at the top of the pack, one at the bottom of the pack. Six. Seven. Red to right centre. Red at the bottom of the pack goes, so could possibly leave himself 14. slightly low on that red at the bottom of the pack in two shots time. That will free up another couple of reds. Fifteen. Couldn't do it on that occasion, so be looking to leave himself low on this next black, I think, and then stun up into the bunch. 23. All about the split now. He gets this one right. I should be home and dry. Could have been better. 30. Not ideal. Last cue in needed here. Oh, another one wriggled in. A couple of times this break. Looked like it might have just caught the jaw, but they've just found their way in. That one was never in doubt. He's Absolutely prime position. 36. Thirty-seven. Not somewhere 44. snooker players like to be dead straight on the black, so it limits your options. You're going to go forward or back. Luckily for Ronnie, Kaplan and Red to centre, so that wasn't a problem. 45. Always like to have a little angle, that's absolutely perfect. 52. Purposely finishing a touch 52. short there, so just flick the other Red into play as he comes through. 53. When O'Sullivan gets a chance like this, there's an air of certainty about the way that he exploits it. Yeah, and it's so fast, Clive, isn't it? You know, it was, there, was a, there was quite a lot to do in this break, but he just he just sees it so quickly. Just gets down and knocks them in. And you're sitting in your chair, you just you just know he's not going to miss from these positions. Sixty-seven. Sixty-eight. Seventy-two. Seventy-five. Yes, there was a miscount from the referee, but he's now corrected 78. it. Seventy-eight. Sullivan, in pursuit with his second cent, in pursuit of his second century of the match. Eighty-two.
87. And the 940th of his career. Ninety-three. Only sixty to go to the thousand now. So with that hundred clearance, O'Sullivan goes to the three to play. He leads by five frames to three. Thank you. So Ding Jun Wei has got to win all three remaining frames to snatch a place. In the semi finals, O'Sullivan having made a break of 100 in the last frame in 5 minutes 16 seconds. Yeah, it was a lovely break. What's incredible about Ronnie playing at them sort of speeds, he just never looks like he's rushing. You see some players, they look like they're just running around the table, but it's just all so easy. You can't help but think, though, this match got away from Ding in that third frame. All right, I know he made 100 to make it 3-3, but momentum was oh, certainly miss. lost. Ronald Sullivan, four. Well, is this a free ball? At first glance, doesn't look like it. Well, in any case, O'Sullivan has exercised another option, having the cue ball replaced in its original position. Adjustment there from Ding. An absolutely perfect adjustment from Ding. Often the case with that shot, though, the first attempt you was here on the side of Finn, so just make the correction next time round. Oh, that's a fantastic shot from Ronnie. Wasn't so easy that time. Didn't have as much cushion to aim at, but played it perfectly. O'Sullivan has lost a few matches this season when he's been fatigued, largely through winning so many matches but when he's fresh and rested he's playing some great stuff but that wasn't an example of it no not another misjudgment it's one of them sort of shots you know if you if you pot the ball it turns into a shot to nothing but if you miss it that sort of thing can happen he's not left nothing easy that's a lovely shot much tougher than what he looked on the screen One. So, Ding can't afford any more mistakes. Six. Looks like the pink pots. He's gone straight down for the black. It's very aggressive, but didn't Seven. get enough reverse side on that. He's just a bit of reverse side just to just to widen the angle when it hit the cushion. This is a nasty little one now. Massive shot for Ding, this one. No, no good. And you feel that could seven. potentially be his last shot in this year's championship.
8. Obviously, this is where every player likes to be, but Nine. when Ronnie's in this position, it's a joy to watch. Never plays a wrong, wrong shot. Just a lovely few series of little cannons. No luck required, all precision play. You just gradually open them up. 16. Never pots a difficult ball. All down to his cue ball being so good. 17. Twenty-three. A little bit to do in this break though, they're not they're not all sitting cherries at the moment. We'll have to play a cannon at some stage. Thirty-one. We look to play 32. one here, just red to the right of the bunch, just get into the cue ball, just move that one out of the way, leave himself on the one at the bottom of the pack. 35. Didn't feel like the angle was on that time, so we'll be looking to leave the angle this time. 39. Forty. And you see, perfectly played. Looks easy, but I can assure you, you've got to be absolutely spot on with them sort of shots. Now you just screw off the bunch. And now look, they're all in the open. Just needs this white to land on a colour. Oh, a bit too far, so green is only option. Big shot, goes in. That will be the end. shot wasn't it always never 100 percent confident with ronnie with the rest not that he's not very good with it just that he never uses it most of the time he can just switch hands so it's very rare he uses the rest so always nice to see him knock him in well he's knocked an awful lot of pots in tonight including two centuries 134 and 100. 58. This could be another to round off the evening. Sixty-five. Sixty-six. I think it's because we just expect so much from him, Clive. We just don't expect to see him miss. But I don't think he's been at his absolute best tonight by a long shot. But, but still, when you look at the stats and the breaks he's made, still in very, very good form. Just, you're just very surprised whenever he misses. 74. Yeah, once he gets into a break-building position, he's like a concert pianist playing a familiar piece of music. 81. Eighty-two. Has the angle from pink to Callan the red. Once again, absolutely perfectly played. And it looks like we're going to finish off with back-to-back -back centuries. Beautiful break. It was never in doubt, was it? From the minute he got to the table. Eighty-nine. On this form, O'Sullivan is going to take some stopping this week. Eighty-four. 
And if he can maintain this form, he'll take some stopping in Beijing in the China Open and in the World Championship Nine. at the Crucible. There we are. It's third century of the Nine. evening. 108. He was 2 0 down. Should have been 3 0 down. 114. But has dropped only one further frame after that. And Solomon concludes the evening's entertainment with a clearance of 121 and beats Ding Zheng Wu by six frames to three to reach the semi finals. Who can stop the rocket? Well, not Ding Jun Wei. We'll get some uh, reaction to that win. Like you're in an exhibition, you know, just try and enjoy it, go for your shots and and have some fun. So if I'm going to lose, lose playing the way I want to play rather than lose not feeling like I was involved in the match. So I sort of just come out and just thought, just go, go for it, really. Because we see you often go, come out strong and lead from the front. It's different mm. when you can go a couple of frames behind to somebody like Ding. Yeah, I never, I never worry about the scoreline, though, because I think if I find some form, then, you know, you, you, you can reel off four or five frames on the trot. So I never really worry about the score. It's just more about my own performance. So I try to sort of change the, the pace of how I was playing and the shots I was taking on and see if I could just get yeah. some fun. You know? I mean, I thought that you played well against Dotty last night, but your safety was the thing more so than your scoring. You know, But tonight, mm -hmm. when you went a couple down, it felt like you thought, this is not quite doing it for me tonight, that kind of style. You need a bit more aggression. I don't really enjoy safety, to be honest no. with you. I can play it, but I don't like sort of long drawn out frames. It's never going to be my game. So, Especially 2-0 down, you're not going to fancy winning that way, are you? Anyway, really, even last night, you know, I know I won, but it was a bit more... Yeah, it was a bit more solid. I was—I didn't feel like I dominated, you know. But I feel like I was, you know, I, I was in charge. But I didn't come off thinking, yeah, I really enjoyed that. You know, it was just a job. I'd done a job last night. You know? We've picked out some shots. You know, when you say play like a, like it was an exhibition, this this shot here, Alan said when you played this shot, if he hit, if he pots yeah. this, I'm going home. Yeah, oh, he's not going home yet, is he? <laughs> <laughs> you must have enjoyed that, though. It was a good shot, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, I wasn't leaving much on, so you know. Um, I just thought, just play, you know, just play. Sometimes that's a spark game, I've been either. Yeah, well, I play my best when I'm playing like that because yeah. you, you tend not to think about it, you know. If I start thinking too much, then I'm in trouble. So I just thought, just come and play, just hit the ball. If you start hitting it crisply, things happen for you, you know. You like that shot on the brown, all of a sudden you, you get a few shots where you, you just know you're timing them. And, and I say, we, I thought you finished the match brilliantly. That was like nice playing ball striking. Starting things are starting to happen for you now, aren't they? You know, you have to be patient sometimes. You can't do it from shot one always. Yeah, you just got to just play to the end, you know, from start to finish. And at some point, if you find a bit of rhythm and spark, mm. then you've got a chance of winning. But, you know, like I said, I had to sort of pretend I was playing, you know, like in an exhibition where you just go for your shot, go for your doubles, mm. aggressive safeties, open the balls up, you know, make, you know, see what happens. Poor old uh, Robert Zablocki could barely get the balls back in the spot quick enough for you. Mm. You're so quick, quick down on the table. Yeah, well, he's, he has to keep up with the pace, doesn't he? And he's done a decent job tonight. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, I mean, we, we know you beat Ding a few weeks ago in, in Preston, but, you know, he knocked you out the Worlds last year, so you know that he, he can beat you over a long match. He's not frightened of you, is he? You know that he's not one of those players that isn't frightened to beat you if the chance comes. Yeah, no, definitely. You know, he's a top quality player and, you know, he's good under pressure. He's got mm. a good all-round game, you know, so... You know, I knew even, you know, as soon as this went, I thought, yeah, but if, I, if I'd have missed this, I thought it could go 5-4 and, you know, then he's probably favourite, you know, because coming from behind is sometimes easier. I wonder if he's ever scored better than you are now, Ronnie, because another three centuries tonight, you know, it's only in Barnsley, I think it was, you got to 900. And now you're 9 nine four two. I make it, you know. You probably never quite scored as heavily as you are now. Well, I'm trying to get to the thousand pretty mm. quick, you know. So um, that's on my, on my mind. So each century I'm trying a little bit more harder now to try and get them. You know? And we were trying to work out when that might happen. You know, people say, oh, could it be next season, the season after? All right, you know, might mm. see in the Champion of Champions. Yeah. <laughs> Knocking in your thousand century. I don't know. Yeah, maybe the end of next season if I carry on, you know. Where I'm going. The other thing about the champion, the champions, there's not going to be many players in it at the moment. Ronnie's already won about <laughs> all the, all the tournaments. And John, yeah, <laughs> and just talking of that, and then another thing that happened today, you know, John's beaten you a couple of times. I know you've mm. beaten him as well this season. He's beaten the last twice you've played. Mm. Bit of a surprise to get beat 6 0 by Ange McGill, wasn't it? Not really, because I think, you know, he played really well at the Welsh mm. and, you know, it took a lot out of him. You know, seven matches, 
And um, I didn't expect, uh, you know, I expect John to have a dip and then maybe come back for the World Championships. You just can't keep playing World Tournament after Tournament. You just, it's impossible. The game's a great leveller sometimes, isn't it? Because you didn't play anything like that today. Well, if I was John, I'd have missed Gibraltar, I'd have missed Romania, had a nice yes. little break and come here a bit fresh. But you go to Romania, you get a bit of a dodgy result and then, you, you know, you're just mm. travelling in and out of airports. Sometimes it's nice to stay at home and, yeah. you know. But you, oh, that's true. As I said before, you're another step closer to that fifth ranking title. I know you've got a semi-final coming but uh, you know that would be another another one to mark up to 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 take five ranking titles in a season very few people have done that yeah no listen i'm not i'm not driven by sort of stuff like that like i say you know i just want to try and enjoy my game play play a way that i feel like i'm you know happy to be out there you know i think that's the other thing jill for so if someone's going to step up and um challenge this guy i think they have to try and relax the way he's talking about Otherwise, it ain't going to happen because he's playing that good. Someone's going to have to play well to, to beat Ronnie. You know, obviously, I'm saying that on his behalf. But you, you just get that feeling that mm -hmm. while anyone can lose at this game, they have to play some good snooker, Ronnie, aren't they? I think. Yeah, but there's a lot of good players out there yeah. playing well. Neil's playing good. Judd, you know, there's so many like Mark Williams is flying. Mm. You know, that you know, I just I'm just happy to be in the mix every tournament. You know. Um, and it's just consistency is probably the key, I think. And it's a you know, nice tournament here, lovely place. You're out for a run today up in the Great Orm. You like nice place to, to get some fresh air. Yeah, it's nice. And my mate Don, um, who's got the fish restaurant around the corner, um, the seahorse where we go and eat our food. He's, he's, I was around his house today just watching the snooker. So it's always nice home from home, you know, like yeah. sitting in a hotel can be a bit, yeah. you know, it's not easy. So I was sitting on his couch, cups of tea, nice bit of fresh fish. And uh, the day just went past nicely, so Beautiful. more of that this week. And Can't see fairer than that. Beautiful. Good stuff. Beautiful. Listen, well done today. Great to have you in top form. Uh, coming up after the break, we'll look ahead to tomorrow's second uh, quarterfinal. Neil Robertson is up against Judd Trump. We'll talk about that in a couple of